Now we will study about the counseling skill. Still in the group leadership series of group counseling. Let me continue to explain some of the counseling skills as the continuation from the previous video. Supporting Supportive behavior can be therapeutic or counterproductive. A common mistake is offering support before a participant has had an opportunity to fully experience a conflict or some painful feelings. Although the intervention may be done with good intention, it may import certain feelings that the member needs to experience and express. Leaders should remember that too much support may send the message that people are unable to support themselves. Support is appropriate when people are facing a crisis, when they are facing frightening experiences, when they attempt constructive changes and yet feel uncertain about these changes and when they are struggling to overcome all patterns that are limiting. For instance, Wahyu feels very supported when several members sit close to him and listen intently as he recounts some frightening experiences as a refugee. Their presence helps him to feel less alone. Blocking Group leaders have the responsibility to block certain activities of group members such as questioning, probing, gossiping, invading another's privacy, breaking confidences, and so forth. Blocking helps to establish group norms and is an important intervention, particularly during the group's initial stages. Here are some examples of behavior that need to be blocked. One. Bombarding others with questions Members can be asked to make direct statements that involve expressing the thoughts and feelings that prompted them to ask their questions. 2. Indirect communication If a member talks about another member who is in the room, the leader can ask the person to speak directly to the person being spoken about. 3. Storytelling If lengthy storytelling occurs, a leader can intervene and ask the person to say how all this relates to the present feeling and events, and why it is important that we know about a person who is not present in the group. 4. Breaking Confidences A member may inadvertently talk about a situation that occurred in a another group or mention what someone did in a prior group. The consequences and impacts of breaking confidentiality need to be thoroughly discussed. Leader need to teach member how to speak about their experiences in a such a way as to maintain the confidentiality and privacy of other group members. Suggesting Leaders can offer suggestions aimed at helping members develop an alternative course of thinking or action. Suggestion can take a number of forms, such as giving information, asking members to consider a specific homework assignment, asking members to create their own experiments, and assisting members in looking at a circumstance from a new vantage point. Leaders can also teach members to offer appropriate suggestions to each other. Although suggestions can facilitate change in members, there is a danger that suggestions can be given too freely and that advice can short-circuit the process of self-exploration. Modeling 
One of the best ways for leaders to teach a desired behavior to members is to model it for them. If group leaders value risk-taking, openness, directedness, sensitivity, honesty, respect, and enthusiasm, they must demonstrate attitudes and behaviors congruent with these values. Facilitating The group leader can facilitate the group process by 1. Assisting members to openly express their fears and expectations 2. Actively working to create a climate of safety and acceptance in which people can trust one another and therefore engage in productive interchanges 3. Providing encouragement and support as members explore highly personal material or as they try new behavior. 4. Involving as many members as possible in the group interaction by inviting and sometimes even challenging members to participate. 5. Working toward lessening the dependency of the leader by encouraging members to speak directly to one another. 6. Encouraging open expression of conflict and controversy. And the last, helping members overcome barriers to direct communication. Empathizing. An empathic group leader can sense the subjective role of the client. This skill requires the leader to have the characteristics of caring and openness already mentioned. The leader must also have a wide range of experiences to serve as a basis for identifying with others. It is impossible to fully know what other person is experiencing, but a sensitive group leader can have a sense of it. It is also important, however, for the group leader to avoid blurring his or her identity by personally identifying with group members. The core of the skill of empathy lies in being able to openly grasp another experiences and at the same time to maintain one's separateness. Initiating When the leader takes an active role in providing direction to members, offers some structures, and takes action when it is needed, the group is aided in staying focused on its tasks. These leadership skills include using catalysts to get members to focus on their personal goals, assisting members in working through places where they are stuck, helping members identify and resolve conflict, knowing how to use techniques to enhance work, providing links among the various themes in the group, and helping members assume responsibility for directing themselves. Too much leader initiation can stiff the creativity of a group, and too little leader initiation can lead to passivity on the part of the members. Evaluating A crucial leadership skill is evaluating the ongoing process and the dynamics of a group. After each group session, it is valuable for the leader to evaluate what happened, both within individual members and within the group as a whole, and to think about what intervention might be used next time with the group. Leaders need to get in the habit of asking themselves these kind of questions. What changes are resulting from the group? What are the therapeutic and non-therapeutic forces in the group? Evaluating can promote better self-awareness and understanding of group movement and direction, both from the 
group leader point of view and also members point of view. Terminating Group leaders need to learn when and how to terminate their work with both individuals and group. They need to develop the ability to tell when a group session should end, when an individual is ready to leave a group, and when a group has completed its work. And they need to learn how to handle each of these types of termination. I would like to point out my message that I encourage you to use supervision and consultation to upgrade your counseling skill. With the help of supervisor, you may begin to find ways to put more of your clinical hunches into words. Skills doesn't develop quickly. You will be upgrading your skills throughout your career as a counselor. Yay! I already complete all of the counseling skills that I need to explain to you. So I hope it helps you to understand what kind of skills that you need to upgrade in the future direction.